How, how much of a factor is genetics? You know, we talk to some people and they say it's a very, very small percentage um, when it comes to cancer. Other people say, you know, your lifestyle can actually alter your genetic makeup and, and so that you're not just locked into getting cancer if you have a certain gene and your parents had that. No, that's true. The fact that your, your parents may have had cancer doesn't mean necessarily that you will get it. However, you are predisposed you know, you have more predisposition to develop it than other, than, than the normal person, let's say, that don't have the, the, that history, mm -hmm. that genetic history. Again, as we, we said before, the, the environmental factors will definitely, in the long run, have an impact in the overall genetic uh, system. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, again, you have to take in consideration all aspects. A person that starts, let's say, an alternative program and does not have the intention to make lifestyle changes, perhaps they would be best not spending their money, wasting their money, because they, you know, it, it requires a lot of dedication, actually. We stand the standardized programs really do not take in consideration personal details, you know, of, of the patient. We do consider that as well. So we try to make it a lot easier for them also to, to receive treatments. Even when uh, we recommend them, for example, to go for radiation therapy, we try to make it as better as possible that they will not be having all the terrible side effects and things that normally they would. When it comes to a cancer patient, how many times do you see somebody come to, to you as kind of a last resort, that they've exhausted a bunch of other opportunities, and what's the difference between that patient and maybe somebody that starts with, with uh, alternative programs or, or integrative? therapies? The, the majority of people actually that go to the treatments in Tijuana, for example, not just to our clinic, but others as well, are really individuals in very advanced stages. Stages four, the majority of them, they've already been sent home because there's nothing more that can be offered. Uh, what they were taking before they either didn't stop or stopped working. And uh, so it's difficult, I mean, because you have to to battle two things at the same time. One is the fact that the patient doesn't have a whole lot of time. And the other one is that alternative programs do not work immediately. Uh, like you would expect, for example, on a patient who's receiving chemotherapy, where you can see regression of a tumor relatively fast. However, in the principles and practice of oncology updates from December of 1993, the DeVita Jr. group uh, published an article that was called In Vitro Determination of Drug Response, a Discussion of Clinical Applications. In that article, they said that because of the patient's unique genetic constitution and disease state, you could not make an assessment until at least two cycles of cellular duplication had taken place. In a, a large number of uh, cancer, uh, types of cancers, uh, this, this cancer cells by themselves don't die. They just divide, okay? They multiply. And approximately one division cycle take, may take anywhere from 21 to 28 days. So you have to allow at least two, two of those cycles in order to objectively be able to say, yeah, the treatment is or not working. Mm -hmm. And how do we know if that is happening? By all possible objective ways blood tests, cancer markers, imaging studies, trying to avoid radiation as much as possible, of course. Uh, so, you know, we take all, those, all that information in mind.